Welcome back, Rankers. Look what's out. It's the new edition of the new rules of marketing and PR by David Newman Scott. I just got my copy today, and David uh, sent me one because I'm actually in the book this time, which is lovely. But if you haven't read this book, uh, you really need to if you're in business, basically, uh, because it's not just about online marketing or any of those sorts of things. It is what the title says. So uh, if you're in business, you need to read these, this book. And available from all good online bookstores. I'm not too sure if that one's available as an audio book, but certainly as an e-book. What I wanted to talk to you about today was just the seven basic steps that are required to make it easy for customers to find you. Remember, when we're talking about search engine optimization, we're talking about customers looking for your products or services. It's not like display advertising, where you're trying to be interruptive and get your message in front of potential customers because you know where they hang out, like Facebook or wherever else. SEO is about customers searching for products or services that your business may have. And the first thing that you're going to look at is keyword analysis. You've got to drill down, you've got to consider things like regionality. And for today's exercise, we're taking this site here, Rusiel Australia. They've been in business in Australia for about, I think, a million years. I'm not sure. But they've certainly been advertising on television for a long time. So we're going to use their site today. And if we go and do some keyword analysis straight up, and here are some phrases that I've already searched for on Google Insights for search. A number of other tools you can use out there, the Google AdWords key, uh, keyword tool, the uh, Market Samurai piece of software, great little piece of software, uh, made locally, in fact, in Melbourne. Okay, so the phrases I've done, I've put together here are tile roof restoration, roof tile paint, and roof repair. And I've come up with these phrases by searching for a base phrase. And if I just put that base phrase in here, by the way, Roof Seal, they, amongst other things, uh, one of the main products they've always advertised on television is basically repairing concrete tile and terracotta tile roofs and those sorts of things and resealing them. So that's the nature of my keyword discovery process. So I just put the word roof in and get all sorts of results. So then I look for a drill down, look at Australia. And press the search button, of course. And I'm not going to try to rank for this word roof, right? That would be silly because it's going to, if I, even if I was able to rank for that single word, it's going to deliver a lot of unqualified traffic. Okay, here in Australia, we now start to see a breakdown. We're seeing roof racks. We're seeing roof tiles. Okay, so we're saying, let's go roof tiles. So we can drill further into roof tiles. And we can see more related phrases there, some are brand phrases. But we're starting to get away from what the actual product is now. We're starting to get into people probably looking to buy roof tiles or looking to select roof tiles. So slightly away. So we I'll go back, a search. And you can see this one over here. Start to look at phrases that relate to your product or service. Roof repairs. Okay. That's probably the place to go. You can cl click on that one and then get further results about that. So we've got Roof Repairs Sydney, Melbourne Roof Repairs as opposed to Roof Repairs Melbourne. So a variety of phrases there. So that's how I've come up with some of these phrases here. And I'll just put Roof Repairs Melbourne in, or Melbourne Roof Repairs, I should say, to see how that compares... And when I talk about regionality, that's what I'm talking about, actually having a town name. So still, Melbourne Roof Repairs is actually pretty good, and you would say, you know, probably high converting, uh, because it is so specific, it's, it, and it is a local phrase. However, we've still got roof repair far and above all the others. So if we go roof, and I always like to check when I get a high 
a volume phrase like that. I also like to check the plural against it to see if there's any discrepancies there. And we can see that there is, that the plural is giving us more traffic. Now, people will often ask in this situation, oh, but if I just try to rank for roof repairs, won't I therefore rank for roof repair? Not necessarily. Not if, if your competition is, is trying to rank for the singular and they've got pages more geared towards the singular uh, than you have, then they're going to rank for the singular. But I would say, you know, you really need to be going for both of those phrases. By, by this is very rudimentary keyword analysis, of course. So let's go and see roof repair. So let's go and have a look at roofs here. And we can see here that we, this is the page title. We can see here that we don't have uh, that phrase in the page title. But before you go and look at those sorts of things, have a look at the competition. What is it that you ha actually have to beat? So I'm going to go for the, for the higher volume phrase. I'm going to go for roof repairs. And we can see here we've got Jim's Roofing. We've got Melbourne Roof Repairs. Uh, these guys, right up, I would say, have done a little bit of keyword research. I don't know who they are, but the fact that the, we saw this phrase, Melbourne Roof Repairs, come up in the keyword analysis, and we see someone's gone out and registered the domain name, and they've got roof repairs as the first phrase in their page title, says that they've done a little bit of homework. This mob here have not done some homework, or if they have, they've implemented it badly, mainly because, you see this phrase here, roof, roofing repair Sydney? Google is going to see that as a single phrase, because the, the comma doesn't come until after the word Sydney. No, so if you're trying to rank for the phrase roof, roofing repair Sydney, great, that's excellent, but seriously, no one's going to be typing that in. We're seeing here a lot of, and even though I, this is interesting, even though I haven't actually put a town name in, Google has decided to deliver some, some maps or places entries. And we can see here that these, the, these guys here are out, uh, they're getting Google reviews. So they're, you know, it's, it's, it's competitive enough, but there is certainly, this guy here, again, Sealtex, this is the guy, it's at the top of the places. They're working hard at it, and they're here on the front page as well. Uh, but I would say, just looking at that, for that phrase, you need to pick a spot where you can, can jump in. And I would say, you know, certainly first round of changes, you would hope to get somewhere around the bottom of page 10. Even this guy here, he's done some some SEO or some, some basic SEO where he's divided up the phrases on his page title and broken them into distinct phrases. I don't think that's a very good one. People tend not to type in a state name unless they're tourism accepted. But for products and services, ranking for the state really is not what you want to do because people don't type that in. Exceptions to that rule will be around, say, conference centres or, or things where uh, venues where you would seek to attract either interstate or international. But certainly for most products and services, people will type in a town name rather than a state. So that's some pretty basic uh, competitive analysis done. I would just also quickly have a look at see what who's doing what with backlinks. Try to assess whether these are real. Look, Jim's roofing has only got 34 backlinks, but they're they're number one for that phrase. These guys here I suspect will have more because they've gone out and registered that domain name. Yes they have. They've got 83. So you can see already number of backlinks really isn't a measure of where you should rank. And then we've got the number three result with 18 backlinks. Let's go down here at this other person who we thought was having a bit of a red hot go at ranking. And we could see 88. Uh, not much there. And remember, it's not about the volume. It's about the quality of backlinks. So, you know, not a lot of backlinks, but I would also just go and have a look at some of those backlinks just to get a feel of what they're doing or who's working with them or if they've employed someone. So when I see these backlinks here, I would say they're all fairly legit. 
because we get we're getting backlinks from other gym sites. We're getting backlinks from a franchise sites. What I'm not seeing there is a whole bunch of junk links that you will sometimes see. You know, we're getting your typical directories like Hot Frog and those sorts of things. But mainly, they're, they look like they're legitimate backlinks. So, and that's probably why you know, they're number one for that phrase, because they are real backlinks. They haven't done much for that phrase in their page title. Um, so it's always a trade-off. You've got to decide on, uh, you know, Jim's Roofing Services has got there, I would say, for that phrase, roof repairs, mainly because of legitimate backlinks. And I would also always go and have a look at the page. And what I'm looking for here is to see if the word roof repairs, and it's not, word roof repairs does not appear on the front page. So that in itself tells me that it's there only because of backlinks and maybe some content deeper within the site, but it is something that you can beat. Okay, so we've done our, our competitive analysis. We've looked at backlink strength, whether it's real or artificial. It doesn't look like they're doing a lot of comp content production on that Jim's site. The, 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 um, and they're certainly not using authorship or anything like that that we've discussed in the past. So then you're going to have a look at your own site. Let's first of all go and have a look at the index. And what I'm going to do here is just, once again, type in the word site colon and our target site is roofseal.com.au. So we have a look at this and we can see right up that uh, roofseal.com.au has 115 pages in the index. Now, if the site is not that big, once again, you've got a problem. If the site is a lot bigger than that, you have a problem. If that seems about right, then okay. To me, that seems a lot of pages for a site, and I'm already starting to see some things here that look a bit questionable. And when you start to see things repeated in a description like this, you know that something's not quite right. And I would say, and I haven't done a good check of this, that it's some of the plugins or the content management system that's been used here. We're seeing here things, flash files, and the one thing I always do is go to the end of that search that you've just done, and that will, and always click this, repeat the search with the omitted results showing right, okay. So right there we're seeing that we've got a lot of links here actually in the index. Google has, hasn't actually followed these links, but it is actually listing them. So that, that's part of the 115 pages. And it's because we're using this plugin. I think that's a plugin for Joomla, Zoom. I think it's like a gallery plugin from memory. It's been a while since I've used that. And really that you need to, to block Google out of that and keep Google away from that. So it isn't, oh yeah, see, there's a lot of them. And in fact, that's probably the bulk of the results in the index. Um, this is good, you know, we've got videos in here as well. That's always good. Okay, but, yeah, obviously, get rid of a lot of those backlinks. Then the next thing to do is go and check your own code. Check to see, you know, what code your code is like for the key phrase. And I'm talking about uh, roof repairs here, the plural. And yes, it is a Joomla site. I would, and you can do this with Joomla, I would lose this uh, meta tag here, right up, index follow. I think it's just not needed. Robots do that by default anyway. The one thing that pops out here, which can be changed for, for a Joomla site and can be fixed, is the page title appearing down here after the meta tags. Big no-no, that page title should be at the start of the head. The reason for that, it's the first thing that Google sees. Also, you can see here we've got, um, if you just have a look at these key phrases, in that page title, uh, we're not, we, obviously we haven't got roof repairs in there, so we need that. And I would question some of these phrases themselves. 
Home Seal. Unless these are, I don't know if these are brand names. Maybe they are. But Home Seal really isn't something something that someone's going to type in. Uh, re-roofing, that's not bad. But cement sitting out there all on its own uh, with, and when I say all on, on its own, I mean there's a comma at the end of it and it's just a, a word sitting there by itself, uh, isn't really going to help you. Uh, drive seal, maybe that's meant to be driveway seal, I don't know. But you would always do the keyword analysis around these phrases and, and double check. Also with Joomla, you can certainly make sure that you get a lot of this script and these sorts of things that the bot doesn't need to see out of the actual page. And then I would go and have a look at the site to see, okay, what's the keyword authority on this page? Or what is this page telling me about? And so the first thing I'm looking for here is heading, header tags, and or heading tags, I should say. And I've caught a lot of flack over this over the years, but just for the record, Google has said time and time and time and time again that it does consider H1s, H2s, H3s, those sorts of things. And that's formatting, basically, is what I'm talking about here, as to what has authority on the page or what the page is about. Right here, it looks like we've got a, a graphic as a H3, and we've got contact us uh, online now as a H3. There's no H1s, no H2s, and certainly, so, you know, Google says there's no authority. I don't even think we're getting that phrase on the front page, so let's just check that. No, so roof repairs does not appear on the front page. I mean, there's a good amount of text here, good balance, and then the next thing to look at is your link structure. So, you know, make sure Google can actually follow these links here. The trouble with doing purely graphical links, or is this, no, these, these are text links, okay, good. So the, the one good thing that we're seeing here is that at least, you know, these links here do actually match your heading, or sorry, your, your page title. It's just that we're not seeing consistency through the heading and back into the menus. So Google looks at all these things. It looks for that consistency of the page title, the headings, the link structure itself, and the, the keywords in those links, which is what I'm talking about here. We actually do have text. But, I mean, the, the main issues there would be around certainly cleaning up the index and certainly, you know, making the, the page titles and those sorts of things far more targeted to the relevant key phrases. And they're the main things that you would look at. Of course, the, the very last thing to do, or the, step number seven, is set up Google Webmaster Tools and check it religiously, and always check things like site performance, always check things like crawl errors. Also, make sure you check things like crawl rate, because that will tell you how often Google's coming out to the site, and if it's taking a long time to download a page and those sorts of things. And that is it for today's show. Sorry it was a bit of a long one, but I, these are questions I get asked all the time, and this is the process I go through to rank a page, and I hopefully that is helpful to a bunch of you out there, and we'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Bye.